So we should be getting ready to. Yeah, let's go. Okay, hey, right. pause up, everybody. I'm Arden Moore with my handful of red tabbies, and this is Meowie Hour, brought to you each and every Wednesday by the Cat Fancier Association. Uh, we got a lot to discuss today. We got not one, but two prizes to give away. Yeah, yeah. And at this time, I want to, of course, uh, introduce you to my co-pilots. We're talking uh, all breed cat judge Kathy Black, shown here with her little mighty doggy Destiny, and all breed cat judge and editor of Cat Talk, Teresa Kiger. Casey just left the building, my furry co-host. Of course, here is Rusty, the performer, and Pet Safety Cat, Casey! We also are very, very happy that our sponsors today are Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine, and we welcome a new sponsor, in clover they make some really cool oh yum 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 cat supplements oh i like this one this one's really good all right and standing there patiently with a beautiful cat named rainy in her arms is our special guest today we're talking allison hunter frederick she is a cat blogger a cat behavior consultant and a cat foster mom and a darn good writer Allison, hailing from Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How's Rainy doing? Getting a little restless. She'll probably get better <laughs> soon. Well, this one is a foodie. I think this one's like, I see food. I see food. Mm -hmm. What do you want? You want it? Do you have, do you have opposable thumbs, Rusty? Don't you wish you do? Well, that just leads me into the segment today. You know, when we start the show, I always bring up something weird about cats and I found out, I did a little digging, not in the litter box, and I found that today, March 3rd, is actually, I can't believe they have a, a holiday for this. It's called If Pets Had Thumbs Day. Did you guys ever hear this holiday? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> so being the creative writer that I am, I'm thinking if pets had thumbs, hmm. Well, cats could join you in a playful game of thumb wrestling. What do you think? I think we should do that with them. I think, all right. <laughs> cats, if they had thumbs, could sneak into your kitchen, operate that can opener, and dive into that yummy wet food. Mm. Ooh, that's scary. Number three, if cats had thumbs, they could secretly text their <laughs> feline friends on your phone. Cats, if cats had thumbs, I got these visual aids. <laughs> they could hog the remote and select favorite shows like maybe Call Me Cat or cat TV on Amazon Prime. What do you guys think so far? Yep. Uh, if cats had thumbs, they could surf the internet on your laptop. Mine do that now. Yeah, <laughs> so you better check your Amazon <laughs> bill. <laughs> and I like this one because I live in a cat and dog household. If cats had thumbs, they could open the refrigerator and call the family dog over. Are you listening, <laughs> Destiny? Yes. Uh, to join in the feast. <laughs> so I think one that's really nice, if cats had thumbs, little Rusty says, we could give all you pet people a big thumbs up in gratitude and appreciation for adopting us. So what do you guys think? Good way to celebrate today, right? Yeah, one of, our, one of our folks on Facebook said that our cats that could give us a big high five. Oh, psh, yeah. high paw. Yeah. High so paw. I'm just saying, guys, never underestimate the power of the feline. They may have uh, no thumbs, but they sure 
have a way of making our lives so great. Um, we also they can still wrap us around their little paws. Yeah. Even though they don't. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. They wrap us around their paws. I yeah. wish I would have thought of that. That was a good one. <laughs> Sweet back the tape. <laughs> All right. Um, we always like to do something that's happening in the world of the Cat Fancier Association. We call it CFA News. And here to kind of catch us up with what's happening in the CFA is Kathy Black. Take it away, Kathy. Okay. Yeah, let me get my right screen up here. Okay, so we wrapped up the um, virtual cat show that was to benefit Sterling Trap King Davis. I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated. Um, we had over 5,000 likes. So over 5,000 votes for people voting for their favorite photo, which is amazing. Uh, some of the finals are still being recorded by our judges. So not all of the different categories are posted yet, but you can go to the website and you can look at at the winners, uh, the Beautiful Eyes Contest winners. I know that one's been chosen and the most popular vote getter. Uh, so, so here we have uh, Pepsi Garcia, who was the first place in Spectators and- Oh, nice. <laughs> and Libby, which is a cat of my breeding. I have to oh, be very- yeah. I'm a proud mother. Libby got the most beautiful eyes, first place winner. Wow. Um, and and so the Smudge one, I love Smudge. I've met her in person, um, Was won the costume contest. And I have to say this little Gru kitten, when I saw this picture, it just melted Dude. my heart. I love that kitten shadow boxing with his own shadow. And he was the first place winner of the cats that are looking for forever homes. So, nice. So we're hey, getting um, this yeah. one. I I picked this one. I got to be the judge yeah. for Gotcha Day, and what I really loved is this little kitten, Ellen. Oh, look at the little. What do they call those? Uh, kicker bumpers or what do you yeah, call those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so cute. Oh. Is already starting life off not with a thumb, but off on the right paw with. Exactly. The pet parent right here. So um, I yeah. had a great time, guys. Thank you again for asking me to judge one of the non-purebred categories. Because <laughs> uh, Gotcha Day is a big day for all of us. We may never know our cat's actual birthday, but we always will remember the day they said yes to us. Because that's how it is, right, Allison? Allison, what do you think? Uh, you know, usually the dogs are like, yeah, 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 yeah. But cats, when we get picked by a cat, that's a pretty big deal. What do you think, Allison? Well, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who will say that it's the cats that pick them and that's the cats they have. And uh, I know my first cat picked me uh, and at least one of the cats we have now picked me. I mean, it just makes it special because they picked you and they want it to bond with you. I agree. But we really now, thank everyone who participated. It was a, a huge success. And that was only because of you, everyone that took the time to enter and upload their picture, register their cat with CCW. So thank you to everyone that participated. That was a, it was a, a great benefit and we appreciate everyone's participation. And uh, for somebody that actually knows Trap King, I'm talking Rusty the Performer, who is one of the circus cats adopted and trained by Samantha Martin. He, he's uncle. He's Uncle Sterling. We're really happy that this the CFA was able to have this contest to benefit him because he's really happy helping with the trap, neuter, and return movement all over the country. So thank you, CFA. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, kitties. And Keep rocking, Trap King. Keep going. You're going to do this, right? Well, one of our cats is from TNR. So, I oh, mean, good. I just totally support. Yes. Which one is that? Uh, Bootsy is uh, a community cat. So she came from uh, our local university campus. And uh, she picked me, I think. Is she around and, uh, to, sh to show off? She is, but I can't pick her up, so I would have to turn the screen to do it. <laughs> but okay, that's uh, right. Well, but that's she does. She, 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 she will get in my you. lap, and uh, she wears a collar, and all the you know looks really pretty and does tricks. 
So she's yeah. fit in. I just can't pick her up yet. That's all right. And you know what? That's a good thing. We're going to delve into this big brain of Allison. She really does know cats. But first, we got some prizes and some winners to announce. Last week, the trivia question was, what was the name of the cat who was the mayor of a, oh, wow, <laughs> of a small uh, town in Alaska? And he was the mayor for 20 years. He was a ginger cat. He was a big tourist attraction. He didn't have a tail. I didn't say that in the clue because you'll know when I say his name. Um, and he would spend afternoons at a nearby restaurant uh, drinking water-laced catnip in a wine glass for 20 years. His name was Stubbs. So Kathy, who is the winner of the Zymox and Oratine gift basket? Well, the winner that was chosen by uh, having the correct answer at random was Jackie Miller. And I've been able to reach out to Jackie and uh, get her mailing address. So she is the winner from last week. And we're going to pick another winner this week. Uh, we're going to have two winners, one for the Zymox gift package that you see here and another gift from our new sponsor which is in clover right um so if you want uh as you guys can see zymox uh is given it has the shampoo and leave-on conditioner or rinse off and oratine has a lot of cool brushless uh, dental ideas to keep your kitties gums and teeth very healthy we are happy that our, uh, our joining us is also in Clover, and they make a lot of cool things for cats and dogs, but this is what a couple of winners are going to, I think we're picking two, aren't we, or one? I can't remember. I think we're doing one for each of the gift. Uh, okay, yeah. so uh, a lucky winner is going to get a four-pack of this. And take a look at the names, Flo, Sleek, Smile, and Spry, everything to help the kitty's eyes, to their teeth, to... <laughs> no hairballs and uh, no pee, pee problems. So um, the woman that is uh, the founder of Inclover is Rebecca Rose. She was a guest on our show about a month ago, and she's a biochemist. So the gal knows her stuff. You remember her, guys? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And I thought it was interesting when she was saying that they they did research and they had three different groups of cats. They had the really finicky eaters. Those yeah. that were sort of finicky and those that would gobble anything. And <laughs> like mine. <laughs> and mine are real finicky. So, uh -huh. so they, oh, okay. they, they did a taste test on those three different groups of cats to see, you know, make sure that they had a product that was palatable to the cats. So right. we're, we're happy to have her as a sponsor. Yeah. Yes. And we love uh, Pet King brands as well. So here comes drum roll. Here comes today's trivia question. Now, you two know the answer because you're all breed cat judges. Allison may know the answer, but Allison, don't say because we don't reveal till next week. Here's my question. Recently, the Cat Fancier Association announced their 10 top favorite breeds for the year 2020. One of the very few things of good news from 2020, right guys? <laughs> and they've recently um, announced them. Now, just so you know, the ragdoll and exotic breeds, they repeated again in the first and second spots respectively. Um, but I'm gonna make it a little harder. Which breed placed 10th? And I wanted to clarify, it's not a popularity contest. It's based on the number of registrations. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. That's why she's an all breed judge, guys, okay? So it's based on how many people registered their kitties with the CFA, right? Yes. Did I do that right? Okay, from all over the globe. Yeah. Okay, which one placed 10th? Was it A, Abyssinian, B, British Shorthair, C, Scottish Fold, or D, Sphinx? I'll repeat that. Which of those placed 10th in registrations for 2020 for the CFA? A, Abyssinian, B, British Shorthair, C, Scottish Fold, or D, Sphinx? And I'll tell you this, all, all four of those are in the top 10. So you, you want to know which one is 10th. Right. I made it that way. But if you did a little Google search, CFA, 
2020 top 10 cat breeds, guys, I'm giving you a big clue. It'll be easy to find. Now, what is really nice is that placing 11th, guys, because the CFA is about all cats, were companion cat registration. There are kitties like mine that are very really hot looking, but they are not purebred. So what do you guys think of them, the companion cats placing 11th? I think they were in the top 10 last year. So they oh, may have yeah. dropped, they may have dropped down a little bit, but, but yeah, I think- but it's I think so it's, good news. Yes, it is. Register more companion cats, folks. Yes, That's it right. shows that the CFA and the cat lovers of all kinds are getting together. And I love that. So, so the winner is going to get what? We got like good gifts, right? Kathy, what are we doing? We're giving away- well, I picked two. I picked two winners. Uh, one for the Zymox gift package with and, the Oratin, yeah, with the Oratin, and one with the Enclover. And um, maybe since we have a new sponsor, if I pick someone who's a previous winner, then that would be great. They can get the Enclover. But but we'll, I'll pick two winners uh, who have the correct answer. And okay. I usually do that on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and, and so I give you everybody lots of opportunity to watch the show and, mm -hmm. and type their response. And we appreciate everyone who follows us. We get some really cool comments uh, during the oh, live. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And everybody, I know you're tuning in from all over the world. And I really do appreciate it, as do Kathy and Teresa and I. So we are, I got to tell you, our special guest today, Allison Hunter Frederick. I met her a few years ago in the town of Lincoln, Nebraska. I was there traveling from Dallas with pet safety dog Kona and pet safety cat Casey. And I was there uh, invited by Pam Hoffman uh, to conduct some pet first aid classes and have a little pet behavior talk. We were raising money for a, a group called the Sadie Fund um, and uh, they put me up in a nice hotel. Uh, we had a great time and I met Allison. She took one of my uh, first aid classes and I'm like, who's that person in the back of the room that's taking dubious notes? So guys, you're in for a treat. She's quietly powerful and she's an up and comer in the world of cat behavior and cat fostering. She writes very, very well. Um, but I'm curious, and I want you guys after the show, I know, I think, uh, Teresa, you're probably um, putting this information for our folks to check her out. But uh, guys, Allison Helps Cats is her uh, Facebook. Um, Instagram is Rainy the Therapy Cat. That's R-A-I-N-Y, the Therapy Cat. Um, please check out um, Allison uh helpscats.wordpress.com. She's just full of words, but full of good tips. So I think I was too wordy. If she was my editor, she'd trim it down a little bit. But Allison, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Did I embarrass you, insult you, annoy, or enlighten? Uh, I don't know what to say. You said so many nice things about me, except that my I, I would talk too much too, and my husband is my editor, and he would cut my words. So. Did cat get your tongue? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, you have a very special cat. You have a lot of cats that you help, but can you, if he'll show up, can you bring back Rainy or tell us a little bit about Rainy because Rainy yeah. is one of those special cats who's a certified therapy cat. Yeah, I mean. Don't be camera shy, Rainy. We love you. This is Rainy. And how old is Rainy? And Rainy is five. And yes, she is a certified therapy cat. She's been doing therapy for two years uh, prior to the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. uh, and actually during the pandemic, we did do a few virtual therapy sessions, but really? Rainy is one of those cats that uh, she really wants to be able to be in person doing tricks, cuddling with you, that kind of thing. So she doesn't quite get the thing of how she can give comfort to people through a screen. Yeah, I noticed that if you see her side profile, Kathy, she's smiling. And so is Allison. Yeah, she's very pretty. <laughs> yeah. How did you guys get together? It sounds like you're dating. How did you get together with Rainy? <laughs> 
Well, uh, a friend of mine uh, was out with her dogs and this little kitten came up to her and just started meowing and meowing. And of course my friend had lots of dogs and so she didn't think she could keep Rainy, but she knew me and knew that I was in the cats. And so she contacted me and she said, uh, you know, do you know anybody who could take this cat and foster? Want to find a great home? I can't do it. I contacted our local cat shelter and asked them if uh, they would take her on, you know, if they could take her and um, at the same time, talk to her about my, talk to my husband about her and he had been wanting us to foster kittens. Oh. We had not done that yet. I, I so like him said, even more now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, well, let's foster her. And so we were going to foster until she got spay neutered. Uh, but he fell in love with her and our pets fell in love with her and I did too, but we had foster field before. And so it was like, we're not going to foster field. We're not going to foster field. But then she fit in with our other cats and with her and with everybody. And, it's, uh, and actually our two other cats have kind of been standoffish. And when she came, uh, they bonded and everybody seemed to get along so well. It's wow. like, okay, well, we just have to bring her into the family. And, uh, I am so glad we foster field on her. I mean, she's well. I like to use the word so foster much. success because yes, foster success. It's a it was a win win for everybody, and you got to spend the time to make sure it's a good fit because it's a lifelong commitment. So I think we need a rainy in everybody's household and in politics. I'm not going to go partisan on any of you guys. Don't worry. But can you imagine if the world was like a rainy and everybody just figured out a way to get along? What a nice world. Rainy, you have a powerful gift. You have a powerful gift. Um, as was, a it raining, cat, was it raining that day? Is that how she got her name? She was found after a rainstorm, yep. There okay. you go. All right. Does she like water? Does she swim? No. <laughs> Although she's curious about it. She will, She will. you know, if the water's running or if uh, it, she'll come and she'll sit near the tub or she'll sit near the sink. She is curious. Okay. Uh, no. So, you know, people are curious. I have a certified therapy cat too with Casey um, through, um, uh, which one is it? It's uh, love, love on a Leash. Love on a um, Leash, yeah. So tell us about, for people that may think they have a nice, calm, easygoing cat who likes to be social, what would be some tips, uh, Allison, you could offer to people who are thinking now that we're hopefully getting a uh, hopefully soon seeing the pandemic in our rear view mirrors later this year, but what, what's your advice you could give people for, so it's, it's good for the kitty and good for those that the kitty sees. Are you meaning kind of like uh, ways to prepare them? Yeah. Like what, what would make a good therapy cat and when, how do you know the cat actually had a good time, enjoyed it? Well, Rainy was, always very outgoing and very into everything and so I thought that she would like going out um, okay. and she also took well to training so you know uh, if you go to do therapy work they have to be able to be comfortable with a leash and harness um, it's helpful if they will you know come and sit and things not <laughs> that she's perfect at it but she's got some of it well, I'm looking at her whole body right now, and her her whiskers are kind of relaxed. She's giving me goo 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 eyes. She definitely loves being uh, touched, and I think her paws are probably just chill, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> her tail's a little bit like this. But the, one of the things about her is that she is extremely tolerant. I mean, uh, when I do my training, she's the first one I do, and if I goof up and make tons of mistakes, she just kind of She'll either sit there and look cute or she'll pester for some treats, but she'll just hang in there. And, you know, I think being adaptable to many situations. And then we, I, I took her out to lots of different places, took her to the stores, took her to Good. the park, visited different places. So um, she's been downloading since she uh, was a kitten. Yep. And that's we, a, that's good. when we knew that I wanted to train her to, uh, be a therapy cat, we also started thinking of, well, what sounds and what situations might she experience? And so like we would drop a spoon or 
dropped, you know, make different sounds so that she would get used to different things that might be in a senior center or might be in a library. Um, really, that's really smart. So you're you're kind of acclimating her with all her senses, not just sight, but anything with smell that maybe could help somebody thinking about a therapy cat. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, I mean, I you can't prepare them for everything. One of the things that I found uh, actually in one of our first visits was there was this lady who would just be coming back from the hairdresser and Rainy did not oh. want to. It was so frustrating and embarrassing. I mean, this lady so much wanted to hold Rainy and Rainy would be like this. And I, when we figured out that it was the shampoo, then I would oh. either time it so that it was a different time but I also right. started trying to get her used to different scents. So oh, there's some things that you kind of just, you know, you go to, a, the more situations you do, the more they generalize. And then the more you also figure out, oh, I need to get them used to this. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, if the cat is outgoing and adaptable, that's the big first thing. And then after that, it's a lot of getting them used to people, places, situations, experiences. I think in a way it's uh, because Kathy can attest to this. Uh, cats in, in cat shows, they have to be used to the sound and all this. Uh, are there uh, uh, any, is there a trend among some of the folks in cat shows to also have therapy cats, Kathy? Uh, we have a, what's called ambassador cats, oh. those cats that are there just for the spectators to love on and yeah. pet and things like that. But that was my question I was going to ask is, uh, a therapy cat is doing what kind of therapy? Are you going to the nursing homes? Are you looking for people that may need, I don't know, PTSD? Or, I mean, what is the therapy that the cat is doing? It can be a variety of things. Uh, Rainy and I started with senior uh, homes and then went to hospice. Uh, and I know some therapy cat people who handlers a, a team, sorry, that that's what they do. That's where the comfort level is. Uh, I had some, uh, a friend of mine who has kids who came over one time to meet our fosters and Rainy loved the kids. And so then oh. it's like, oh, I have <laughs> to think, would she do good in a read to a pet program? So she also goes to the libraries and does read to a pet. Um, That's nice. See? I know there's a therapy cat handler, maybe a few of them, that they go to the airports and they bring comfort to travelers. Uh, I'm not sure if Rainy would be up to that commotion, <laughs> but that's knowing your cat and knowing the levels of what they can do and by Rainy. <laughs> yep. You read it uh, perfectly right there. Yeah. So, um, Kathy, I can also attest because Casey, as a therapy cat, goes to kids' schools, critter camps for the SPCA, memory care centers. And when we have to travel, I put him in one of those pet strollers at the airport where he's strapped in, of course, with a cowboy hat. And he strolls around and greets all the people. And then when it's time to go in the, in the cabin of the airplane, I collapse the uh, pet stroller and he pops in his airline approved carrier and goes to sleep. Um, but it all is, as you can see, what Allison is doing is getting them accustomed to different, unused to some sounds, smells, and, and uh, uh, sights and and basing that so it's all for the cat you're you're not forcing it's not like a little league parent right Allison yeah they and it can also they have a major league baseball player I mean you life. have to be your advocate so I mean when yeah. I first started with her I had places that you know would you come and be in the common room with the seniors and I was like Rainy is not going to be able to handle that she yeah. has to do one-on-one -on -one. now she can so that's the other thing is sometimes they grow into things yeah. But we started small and we started with what I knew she could do and uh, and build on those successes. And then you build right? on those things and then it depends on your cat. I mean, the world is, the sky's the limit depending on the personality of the cat of what kind of, com you know, who they can comfort and what comfort they can give. Casey would go with Kona, my dog, to memory care. We hope to go back. And he would just give a whole performance and everybody would be in a big circle and he would touch pause and I'd ask him a question. I felt like a sidekick, you know, to a comedian because he answered every question. But he liked <laughs> everybody, you know, being careful and letting him be able to be in the laps of others. I'm assuming that uh, Rainy is very good with Manny Petty time. Yes. 
explain that a little bit. Explain the nail clipping. <laughs> oh, manicures, yeah. Manicures. <laughs> yeah, since the time she's been a kitten, I've been teaching her, uh, I mean, she can get her nails clipped, she gets her teeth cleaned, she gets her hair brushed. So she has a grooming routine that I do every day with her. And uh, she, uh, some days she tolerates it, and other days she's just like, ah. Spotting. 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 Not <laughs> spotting. Yeah. Spotting. If, if we're, we're going to, uh, you know, the day that we're going to go to do therapy, I always make sure her nails have been clipped and yes. her teeth has been brushed and she's all brushed, her hair's all brushed. And So who, who do you, who do you, did you get her certified through? What was your love program? on a leash. Oh, love on a leash. Okay, cool. Yes. So there's pet partners, guys. There's other things, but it's nice. Check them out. If you feel like you have a cat that has this ambassador-like quality, likes to be with other uh, 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 different kinds of people, um, I don't know, Kathy, what do you think? It's, it's like your ambassador cats at CFA. What an important role they have, don't you think? Oh, I agree. And, and I, I think it's good advice to start off small. I didn't know anything. And I had a cat that loved everybody. It was my Somali, my very oh. first Somali. And I took him to the library and let 34-year-olds maul him. Oh. And he loved it for about 30 minutes. And then he was like, <laughs> I've like, had enough. And I was like, you know, this was probably not the best thing to do. But he didn't care for 30 minutes. I mean, these kids just all had their hands on him. They were all hovering over him. They were all grabbing at him. You know, he didn't care. He loved it all. But he got full of it after about 30 yeah. minutes. And, and, and that's and, what I just saw. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I saw Allison's red Rainy saying, Rainy goes, I'll, I'll be back. I, I'll, I'll yeah. come back later. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing. You really, you have to put the cat's signals. Uh, pay attention, right, Allison? Yeah, and when we first started doing cat therapy, actually, Rainy was not much of a lap cat, so I relied on tricks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I put her in the, uh, someone's lap for a little bit and I'd watch her. And if she started getting restless, then I would just take her down and give her a break. Uh, she's, I've taught her to sit on a blanket so that then she, I could put the blanket on a person's lap and then she will sit on that person's lap. So she has grown into being yeah. a cat that will sit on people's laps. But yeah, you always have to watch the... Uh, well, and we had a couple of times when I did therapy with her that, um, you know, she started acting a little different and a little strange for her. And so then I, I like, I knew there was something wrong. And so I said, like, okay, I'm going to be back. I'm going to take her right. And when I sighed and she wasn't feeling well. And okay. so we all know, have bad days. communicate <laughs> what they need. And she communicated to me what she needed and then everything was fine. Well, that's good. Hey, guys, we're speaking with Allison Hunter Frederick. Um, please check her out on uh, Facebook, Allison Helps Cats. Uh, she's hails from Lincoln, Nebraska. She's quite a writer, but I really like this blog. Uh, she's going to tell us that inspired her. The title of her blog post, ready for it, guys? How guinea pigs got me into pet writing. All right, I'm as curious as a guinea pig. What? <laughs> um... Well, I've always been a writer, uh, but... So you I have kind of thumbs, a... right? Like, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but I had kind of gotten away from it. And when I um, came to Lincoln and I um, got a guinea pig and I was observing them, uh, I just started taking notes about them. And mm -hmm. then I started writing little stories about them based on my notes. And I, at that time, I had been a, te a special education teacher, so I started sharing oh. them with the kids at school. Nice. And people were telling me that, oh, these are very calming and very relaxing. And so I just kind of went from there. Of I got more into wanting to write about pets. I mean, always loved writing, always loved pets, but I just had not really combined the two um, very much before that. So when you win this major writing award, you can't thank the Academy. You're going to have to thank a guinea pig, right? Well, the, the guinea pigs got me into it, but cats kept me in it. All right, so there good, we go. Good. I can still keep, I can still thank the cats. <laughs> And Lincoln, Nebraska, I loved visiting there. Everybody is really cool. Small world. I went to Crown Point High School in Crown Point, Indiana, like years ago. 
one of my high school friends, Joanne Frere, is a chef in Lincoln, Nebraska, oh, who wow. saw that I was coming to teach your first aid classes. And we got together and catch up. And I'm like, everybody in Lincoln, Nebraska is nice. I really, really loved going there. So there's some place hey, called, Lincoln. yay, there's the weather's, well, it's like Dallas. Uh, Grand <laughs> uh, Feline Hotel and Salon. What, you wrote about that. So is that one of the hot spots, um, the, the must-sees when COVID gets a little bit bye-bye uh, that people should go in if they're cat lovers in Lincoln? Well, it's a um, cat boarding and grooming place. So, yes, I think people, if they need to, uh, if they're going to go somewhere and they want to bring their cats be so they can go travel, or if they want to make their cats look all spooky. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, a variety of cat businesses in Lincoln and Omaha that are, you know, very small businesses trying to get established and I like to write about those on my blog and give support to our local Good. pet entrepreneurs and so are, are Lincoln and Omaha like sister cities or how would you describe it uh well I'm not originally from Nebraska so I hope I don't get in <laughs> trouble for saying yeah I mean Omaha and Lincoln are big cities in yeah. Nebraska <laughs> they're right next to each other aren't they yeah they're about an hour away Oh, okay, okay, all right. Lincoln's our capital, but Omaha is is big, and, and we do have an airport in Lincoln, but I think a lot of people probably fly into <laughs> Omaha. It's a bigger airport, so, so the we other do a thing, lot of things back and forth. All right, so um, you are taking a lot of classes and learning about cats, so it's you strike me as someone who's both a teacher, you are a teacher, and a student, so tell us what's happening with your world in this deeper dive into cats? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, I took a um, cat behavior and retention course from the Humane Society of the United States. I kind of took it for fun because I was loving stuff to do with cats, loving stuff to do with behavior. But, uh, you know, practical wise, you have to have a job and you have to be doing things yeah. where you're bringing in money and all that kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff. And so I took it just for fun because I was in between, you know, I, I had done all my, like, uh, educating myself for my job. And I thought, well, I'll take this just for fun for me. And I loved the course, uh, I think, because it does a lot with behavior. And I do have a teaching background and work with, you know, uh, analyzing why kids learn certain ways, how to help them, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you have a good foundation. This. Yeah, this is a good foundation, isn't it? Uh, when I finished that class, I told my husband, I said, you know, if it wasn't for I need to make money from it, <laughs> I would be a cat behavior consultant. I just think I would love it. And he said, well, then you should. And uh, the International Association of Behavior Consult uh, Consultants uh, has a scholarship called the Rebecca Park Scholarship. Uh, I think it's held twice a year. And you write an essay about uh, what you want to do for the animal behavior world and, um, you know, why you're, you're unique or how you can bring something to yeah. the world. And, and I think the year that I did it, they also wanted to know um, uh, an emphasis on why certification and education and that kind of stuff was important. And I uh, submitted an essay and I won their contest, which gave me a uh, scholarship for the, the, one of their biggest classes. It's like a $3,000 class. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. I didn't uh, know it, that. Cool. It gives, it gives like the Science Foundation, the Behavior Foundation, all kinds of things. Yes. Yay for IABC. <laughs> I mean, as winning the scholarship through them, I, the, the HUS, HSUS course got me interested but getting the scholarship is where then, okay, now I have the foundation. Now I'm going to try and see, can I be a cat behavior consultant? And uh, I am one of those people who believes that everything I do, I should know the background to it, the research to it. What is, you know, what are all the experts saying? What is scientific, what is science-based and stuff? So, so uh, when your mother tells you she loves you, you say, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Well, that, no, that's being a good scientist. That's being a good researcher. That's being a good writer. So I know there's tons of things, but is there something that you want to share with everybody that may surprise them about feline behavior? A couple of things, because you're you're immersed in it now, and I'm really proud of you. Um, what would be something surprising about cat behavior? Well, I don't. I guess me being in it for so long, I don't know for me if it's surprising, but I know that it still surprises people a lot because it kind of breaks a cliche of that. We all think cats are aloof. We all think cats don't. And of course, all of us have, you know, we know the difference of that. But the stereotype is that cats are not social. Cats don't need people, that kind of stuff. And there is a cat researcher, Kristen Vitale, who is who has done a lot of studies that is showing that cats bond with people and they need people. I mean, they have studies where you know, the people have left the room and then they come back in and the cat comes up to them. Uh, and so I love the cat researchers that we have because they're bringing out stuff to break all these stereotypes and it's going to help people see that cats can be great companions and they can bond with us and they're so important to our lives. And so then they won't be these throwaway animals. Oh, that's um, a big point. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why there are community cat colonies because people will take the dog and oh the cat cats can fend for themselves so in our little neighborhood in Dallas we have a number of community cats that once lived in homes and so I like that they're not throwaways um, I'm going to throw to you a big accolade because I, I know you are quietly powerful that's what I said before and when you were in my class and I met you do you ever like meet somebody Kathy and you're like "Ooh, that's somebody that's a good person that's a person that's going to be continuing making a difference what do you think yeah yeah and I mean you were a teacher with special ed kids um, you foster and uh, I know on your Facebook guys after the show check out Allison Hunter Frederick uh, it's Allison Helps Cats Tell us about uh, your newest little uh, foster kitty, a very shy one named Mystery. What happened that you just posted? Uh, well, we are fostering three kittens that we got in November from our local shelter that they were eight weeks when we got them. They had not had any, you know, they had not been socialized at that point. And that means they're, it's more of a challenge to socialize. Uh, and actually when we first got them, they hid from us. We had to put them in like a mesh playpen type thing to have them a smaller space so that we could be able to interact yeah. and socialize with them. Plus to give them something where they felt safe. It was lots of hiding places in this smaller area. Uh, but even then, I mean, they were like their ears were back and they were crouched and they were hissing. I, they were the most scared cats we've had of wow. as far as fosters. Uh, and mystery was the most scared. Um, it, you know, it was impossible to pick her up for the first couple months. And if we had to take her to the vet or anything, I, it was just, it, yeah. people were terrifying to, to, yeah. uh, to her. I mean, people it was don't so understand scared. that cats will go feral if they don't have human contact. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, well, and, and probably their, their mom mother is a feral. And yeah, their mother okay. was a feral, so they just had never had any mm -hmm. kind of human contact to, to So what happened to Mystery up. this week? So this week, uh, we finally got to pet Mystery. Not only are we getting to pet Mystery, but she will come up and she will arch her back and she'll lean into us and she wants to be petted. Nice. And that was so huge because, well, it took us, I think, until January to get either of the others to let us pet her, pet them. But Mystery was the one who had been the most scared, and she still was the one who would kind of hide from, you know, kind of retreat from being petted and just very shy. And to get her to come and want to be petted, it's I mean, now all three of them, we hope, will make, we, we know, will make great house, great pets and companions to somebody. And the, the you know, now we can feel... You know, the first week, few weeks we had them, we kept going back and forth of like, will they ever be able to be someone's <laughs> pet? And, uh, you know, wondering, we did not want to have them to go out and be in a colony. They're yeah. little kittens, but we, we were concerned. Uh, and to 
for them to be to this point where they all will let us pet them and uh that's a great... will sit on our lap and Misty will come up and rub against us and it's like this is yeah <laughs> Lots of progress. Well, hey guys, as you can tell from this, she has many talents and she is committed to champion cats. We're going to um, thank you, Allison. I want you guys to check out her Facebook page, Allison Helps Cats. Um, also, Allison Helps Cats WordPress with a lot of blogs. Stick around, Allison, because next up we have. Kathy Black, our all breed CFA judge. She's going to talk about the Selkirk uh, Rex as I get ready and go off screen for our kitty cocktail. Take it away, Kathy. Okay, I, I thought it was really curious or, or funny on the CFA website. It said if you're an uptight pet owner, then you're probably gonna be frustrated if you had a Selkirk Rex because they have bad hair days from time to time. I thought that was hilarious. Um, so let's talk about the Selkirk Rex. We've talked about the Rex breeds in previous episodes of Meowie Hour, we've had the Cornish Rex and the Devon Rex, and now we have the Selkirk Rex. They have tested them, and genetically, these are all three different Rex mutations. So all three of these breeds are distinctly different. Um, this breed was a naturally occurring breed from a house cat called Miss DePesto of No Face that was found at a shelter in Montana. And this is a dominant gene, uh, but if when they outcross, they can get cats with straight coats and also kittens with curly coats. The curls are loose and plush and soft, and they come in both short hair and long hair variety. And the breeders can currently still outcross to the British short hair and to the exotics until the year 2025. So that's just to give them a little more genetic diversity. To me, um, I'm, I'm really wanting to see a curly haired Brit. Uh, that's kind of the look that I'm, I kind of think the standard most depicts, but uh, they come in lots of different colors and patterns. Uh, here are a couple of short hairs. And uh, when this breed was first presented to CFA, it was kind of like a cat in sheep's clothing. So you kind of want to picture that in your mind that you've got a cat wearing uh, sheep's uh, skin, so to speak. So these cats have lovely loose curls. They, um, they, they have a very similar head structure to the British short hair. Uh, the eyes are to be level and um, they have a sturdy boning. A very plush, dense coat. They do come in long hair, and I love this picture of this cat. And they also come in the short hair variety. And the curls are loose, and uh, like I said, they can look like they're having a bad hair day if the curls are going all different directions. Um, but they are very uh, sweet cats. They're very um, uh, uh, quiet cats, and. Um, uh, they have a very uh, unique look to them. Uh, Teresa, did you want to add anything about them? You know, I am all, when I get a um, Selkirk Rex that has that coat on the table, all you want to do is just is just feel their coat all day yes. long. It's just amazing. And, you know, they, they're really, a, they're a laid back, easygoing cat. Nothing much bothers them. They're, they, they would be a great cat to live with. And, and I think the short hairs are maybe a little more popular than the long hairs. We tend to see more short hairs yeah. uh, on the show, at the shows instead of the long hairs. And that may just be because that longer that coat gets, the more uh, difficult it is to deal with. Um, they say that they don't use any kind of special shampoos to make the hair curly. It just dries that way naturally. And... Um, and it is a very unique feel to the coat, completely different than our other Rex breeds that we recognize. Um, but just like all the other Rex breeds, their whiskers tend to be more brittle and they break off. They're curly too. Yeah, the whiskers are also yeah. curly. So they're curly and they're brittle. And so a lot of times they will have very short whiskers, uh, just like all the other Rex breeds. But um, it's, that's our Selkirk Rex for this week. <laughs> 
Amen. Yay! Way to go, Kathy. Yay. <laughs> Casey liked it. Hey, guys. Um, we, like Kat, Casey, we're mutts, and uh, we are very excited that the uh, companion cats are really becoming uh, more and more involved with the Cat Fancier Association. As you know, uh, Casey and Rusty are card-carrying members of the CCW. And Kathy, if you don't mind, tell people like Allison how they can get maybe kitties like Rainy involved. Well, and I, I had someone put on Facebook, don't forget to talk about the Pet Me Cats. So oh, um, yeah. once, once so the show... Ambassador Cats and, and Pet and Me we Cats. Also have well, they're, they're, cats. Part, they're all together under one program now. Right. Oh, but they can, okay. they, they can be a pedigree cat or it could be a CCW cat. Uh, that's being shown in the household pet division. So CCW is our companion cat world. For a one-time fee of $13, you get to register your cat with the Cat Fancier Association. And when you upload a picture, we will mail you back a nice little hard plastic card with your cat's picture on it, your cat's name, and uh, your information. There's also luggage tags, there's key rings, and so there's other uh, items that you can purchase, go to cfa.org slash ccw. And again, thank you to all the new registrants, registrants that we have from our virtual cat show. All right, and Casey loves being a CCW member and so does Rusty. Hey guys, um, we've got a little bit of time left. We're going to um, uh, talk about something near and dear to my heart and Casey's and that's pet first aid. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Kathy, let's go ahead and show that picture so people know what the hell my class is called. It's called Pet First Aid, the number four and the letter U. Allison, I think I just made it really hard, right? But I think once you see it, you you get it, right? <laughs> you do, yes. You won't, you won't win an, uh, an A in grammar class from an English teacher, but I, I kind of wanted to use that. And with us posing proudly are Rusty the Performer and Casey the uh, Pet Safety Cat. Folks, I'm a master in pet first aid and I teach different levels. I teach for folks that don't care about certification, pet parents just want a crash course in something. I also teach a fast growing popular class for certification, which is a three hour class, cat first aid and CPR. And I taught it last week, guys, guess what? We got somebody from Germany in the class Wait. and a couple of people from Canada. And a Somali, you guys know Summer, who hangs out with her human, Janice Garza. And they took the class and actually did a blog post on how much fun they had and how the fact that their human, Janice, didn't fall asleep. That's a good thing, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so we have some dates for you, but you can go to Pet First Aid for you and sign up. Please, Casey is the hardest working pet safety cat on the planet. Yes, he and is. He will, he will teach you how to find your cat's femoral artery and a pulse, what to do if your kitty gets stung by a bee, how do you do chest compressions on a cat, and what do you do if the cat's like ah, 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 choking? Casey and and my neighbor, my neighbor told me that she had to make her dog throw up because it ate a grape. It's a little tiny four months. Oh, old. that's a lot of sugar. And that's and, a, that could be a blockage too. And, yeah. and so she called the vet. The vet told her how. And I said, I know how because I've taken Arden's class. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you guys doing this intentionally in your home. But really, especially during this pandemic, a lot of us are home now. And we're, we may be leaving things out and our curious cats and dogs are getting into them. So we kind of teach you some things on COVID to survive with your dog and cat. Um, I'm happy to say that our next cat class, a three hour class is going to be um, Sunday, March 14th. We only have about two or three um, spots left, but we also have another cat class on Thursday at night on April 22nd. For those of you like me that have dogs and cats, we do offer a four and a half hour program. We've got some openings for Saturday, March 13th. And also on, uh, I'm trying a rare one. I'm gonna try a Monday, April 12th, just to see if anybody's just taking the day off. Um, but everything is veterinary approved. We do have fun, but I'm teaching you the latest and I teach you the most practical. And I really hope that you can join us. 
Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. But we make it fun. Nobody sleeps. Live, interactive, safe. I don't care where you live. I mean, now I can say Egypt and Germany and Canada. That's pretty good. Yeah, and you can no bring way. your cat. Yeah, and you can bring your cat. So I think Allison's trying to get into a class soon, right, with Rainy? Yep, the 14th. Okay. Okay, cool. So guys, I hope you join us. It's something I'm very, very passionate about because you can learn to save a kitty's life and learn how to look at your cat and be able to catch things a little bit earlier because we know they don't sit there and go, oh, I got this pain in my jaw or my, my nail is kind of snagged. Kitties are prey and predator and they're like, I'm fine, I'm fine. So we help you help your feline. So I think I said enough about that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, it's time to, it. yeah, thank you guys. Um, let's talk about uh, kitty cocktails. One of the things I love to do on this show is to celebrate and to toast to all cats. And with the help of the very talented Teresa Kiger, check out her latest graphic. I'm calling this drink, and guys, I gave you an easy one today. The Smooth Chartreux Salute. The easy shot that goes down smoothly and cleanly with no hint of cat hair. It's big. <laughs> um, for the cat fancier people, real quick, Chartreux, you want to say something, uh, Teresa? About the Chartreux? What it is? Well, nope. the, char the Chartreux is a French breed of cat. Uh, yeah. so the only breed I currently have in the house of cats. And they come only in the color of blue or gray. And they're short haired. And they are mute. They never make a sound. They're very quiet. And they're very sweet. And I'm sure that's how your drink is. Quiet and sweet. Quiet, <laughs> sweet with a little zing from the lemon so okay. guys it's real easy all you do is take a cocktail shaker you can see it's already got ice in it and it's already sweating on the outside waiting for me um you need to put one ounce of your favorite uh, vodka there's different ways you can do a little uh, shot like i'm going to show you with the lemonade or you can do a four count for one ounce which is one two three four then get your favorite lemonade and add an ounce of lemonade. So is this hard lemonade? Is this what you call? Yeah, I just got yeah. this. Mine's Milo's. <laughs> um, and then you give it a nice good shake. And what I've done is I've taken a tall shooter. This is a tall shoot shot glass. And I've already rimmed the glass with sugar and lemon juice. So you're getting that pucker in the sweet and easy breezy. You simply just strain it into the glass. So at this time, whether you have a, a smooth chartreuse salute, a glass of water, a tea or whatever, let us all please raise a glass and let us toast to all cats everywhere for making us better humans. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. Yeah, you can do it virtually, Allison. Good. <laughs> also, <laughs> at this time, I would love and I am thanking everybody who makes Meowy Hour possible, starting from the Cat Fancier Association, Pet King Brands, In Clover, my co pilots, Teresa. Um, Kiger and Kathy Black, my feline co-host, Casey and Rusty, and of course, great miavelous guests that deserve pause and applause, like Allison Hunter Frederick. Thank you so much for being on our show. Allison, did you have fun? I did. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, guys, next week, we got a judge in the house. What? Yeah. All breed cat judge Ann Mathis is going to join us and kind of give us the inside scoop of what cat shows are all about and how we can participate and uh, much more, including the household cat division. Um, so please stay tuned. And until next time, guys, same cat channel, same cat time. We're going to see you on Meowie Hour. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>